Hello fellow translators. I thought it would be useful for you to look at how an agency looks for translators on pros.com. There are two specific methods you can use pros.com to find translators and I want to go through them quickly so you can get a feeling as to how people are looking for translators on pros and that way you can better position yourself to be found by these people who are looking for translators. <music> So let's start with the most common way, and that's to post your job. Now, if I want to post my job, I'll go here, I'll click on post a job, and I'll just show you quickly what happens so you can get an idea as to what goes on in the back end here. So when I'm posting a job, I will put translation, editing, proofing, etc. And uh, then it has the names, all the information here. Now, it has COVID-related job. Just be aware that this gets abused. I think I've seen it abused more often than used correctly lately. And uh, it's really too bad because people know that if they click on it, th it'll be given more visibility. I don't know exactly how, but uh, yeah, just be careful. Anyway, services required translation. You know, I'll click on that. I'll put a title and details of the job. And then here I put the language combination. And this is why it's important to always have job alerts for your language combination. And I've mentioned this before in other videos and I talk about it at length else elsewhere in the course and whatnot. But uh, I know I've mentioned it before. Uh, make sure that you have job alerts set up for pros.com. And I have videos showing exactly how to do that. It's very simple. And that way, if I click, say, French to English, can click on Add Pair. This means that as soon as I post a job, anyone who subscribed to email alerts, to job alerts on pros.com for that language combination will get an email. It'll go straight to their inbox, this job. And that's what you want. You want to receive these jobs right away in your inbox so you can see them right away and see if you're a good fit. Uh, anyway, then you put the subject field, you know, whatever uh, it might be about, and then a, a sample text. You can either require it or not as a short test translation. I've mentioned this before, even if they don't require it as a short test translation, why not do it anyway? And then here, there's the other information, usually volume, you can put the deadline, etc., etc. And here you have a bunch of other information. I won't go through it all in detail. Oh, the only other thing I should mention actually is here, you have the option here to limit this to paying members of pros. So the options here are yes, limit to jobs to paying members, no, allow non-members to express interest. So you have to actively allow non-members to see it or else you can do an option where non-members see it after 12 hours or tw 24 hours. But the default here is that only paid members can see it. And it's right here at the end, so people often just scroll past it. And that's why, that's another reason, let's say, why I always recommend paying for pros. By the way, even if you're not a paid member, and they click on this and you can see it, you're still going to have to pay something to apply for the job. That's the way pros is, and I've done other videos where I talk about that. But if you pay for pros ahead of time, then you don't need to worry about this because you'll always see the jobs. Here, submit quote via pros.com. That's the default. I prefer this. I don't know why many companies say by email. I'm not filling it out, so I won't show you. The next stop is the budget that it lets you fill out or not fill out if you don't want to, and then you can post it. So that's the first method. The big takeaway from this method is that you should sign up for job alerts in your language combination. So make sure you do that, then you'll receive these jobs in your inbox. But here's the second method. The second method is the one I currently usually use. And I use this second method because I would rather pick the translators myself. I feel comfortable knowing what I'm looking for in a translator rather than have the translators all contact me. It gives me that much more control. Just go to here and I click on translators and interpreters. So then you get this page and uh, so now I can specify what I'm looking for. I'll say I'm looking for, I don't know, an Italian to English. Uh, service type translation and then I'm gonna leave the field of expertise blank for now because I want to show you something and then all this usually blank there's one more thing I usually click on under more options and that's among the top three pairs I definitely want their la the language pair at least to be in the top three pairs I mean I prefer the top or only pair but I will accept among top three pairs I don't want top eight Native language, I want it to be the target language English so I usually specify this not everyone does yeah, and then I'll click on search and now you get a list of a bunch of translators here. It says 5,635 results. Out of these, 341 are actually members. That means paid members. Here you see a bunch of names, and how do you think they rank them? Now, I, I would have thought they would rank them by the number of reviews or ratings they have, but that's not the case at all. These are ranked in order of number of kudos pro points. 
which to me seems quite odd. But anyway, so the top person here has 19,091 kudos points. The next one, 7,507, 6,000. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, I won't even bother because I don't have any kudos points or I have very few at the moment. There's no way I can compete with this person. I'm never going to show up in the top page or top two pages for this. So I don't even want to bother. Well, that's why I say not so fast. Well, I don't know if I said it, but I'm saying it now, not so fast. And this is also the reason why I actually want to specify my field of expertise. I never leave this blank for exactly this reason. I know that otherwise it'll list everyone and it'll list them in order of kudos points, which frankly, I don't care that much about. I mean, it's good to know, but if I had a field of expertise, then it narrows it down somewhat. So if we try something like say, let's try economics. As you can see here, this guy, Jim Davis, is still up top, but he only has 428. And then there's 57 and then eight in the field. So at this point, if you get, look, if you're able to get any kudos points in economics, you're going to be in the first page, right? And so if you can get these kudos points, even just one or two, then, uh, then you'll be on the first page. So as long as you have them in a certain specialization, it helps. In fact, if we pick another specialization, geography, then here you see something very interesting. For geography, there are zero. So they're listing them because of the numbers they have in the pair, which this is this means Italian to English, the language pair. But uh, there no no one has any kudos points in geography. So if you can manage to get one kudos point in geography, you are right here at the top. And when people need a translation in geography, well, they're going to find you right there, right at the top. So what's the big takeaway here? The takeaway is you want to get kudos points, but not only that, but you want to make sure you get enough kudos points in your specialization or in a certain specialization. If you can answer many questions that have to do with legal translation, that's a lot better than answering one in legal, one in business, one in economics, etc. because there's more chance that you'll show up at the top. Now, I know some of you right now are extremely frustrated with me because I keep mentioning kudos points and you're like, okay, I need to get more kudos points, but how do I get kudos points? What are kudos points and how do I go about getting more of them? Well, fear not, I have another video where I talk about it. Just search for kudos points on my channel and I have a video where I talk about how you get kudos points. I won't go into it now. By the way, we're in the geography section now and if you're wondering why this is all in yellow, it's because that's me. So I show up in the top page for geography, even though it's not one of my specializations, just because I have 35 points in the language pair. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you found this useful because those are the two main methods people use pros.com to find translators. They either post the job and wait for the translators to contact them or they try to contact the translators directly. If you can optimize both methods, then you're in a pretty good position. So if you can make sure that you have the job alerts and you can reply to them and that you can get your kudos points. So over the long term, you'll be getting more contacts and you'll be getting contacted more often by people who require translators. And uh, that'll put you in a very good position. I might do a video in the near future showing how I look for translators on LinkedIn as well. So stay tuned. Otherwise, I'll talk to you next time. Okay, thanks. Bye. Sabedum.